Welcome to this presentation on, on the Automation Developer Days on how NSO Arc made Swisscom regression testing a breeze. My name is Mikael Tidemar. I'm a Cisco software architect working in CX, delivering large NSO projects to all the service providers in Europe. I'm joined here with my friend Martin. Thank you, Mikhail. Uh, my name is Martin Gysi. I'm a network uh, and automation architect at Swisscom, working with Mikhail on uh, delivering our next generation fully automated network. So as I said, I'm from Swisscom. So Swisscom is the incumbent telecom operator of Switzerland. We're a full service provider with a mobile network, a broadband network, business customers, what have you. Um, so I would like to explain to you why NSO Arc is an essential tool when developing NSO services. Let me start at the very high level. Sorry, go back one. We are currently consolidating our multiple purpose-built networks into a single network. So on the left hand side here, you can see an overview of our current networks. Uh, they are, all, as I said, purpose built, one for mobile, one for residential and so on. They are developed and operated by different groups of people using different processes. Now we would like to move to a single network and move all services to that network. Now if, that's not, if this network were to fail, uh, there would be no backup left. So we must make sure that it is 100% available. Now, one of the key pillars uh, to do such a network, to construct such a network, is, net, uh, is the network architecture. We uh, reduce complexity by moving away from different MPLS-based networks that are interconnected by interays option C and go towards a single network uh, running on top of segment routing for IPv6, SRV6. So this alone, uh, this complexity reduction will for sure increase the availability a lot because it's much easier to develop for this network. The other pillar, and that's what I would like to focus on, however, is automation. Um, most incidents in our network, they happen after a change. And uh, most of the changes were applied manually. So we are constructing and building and operating this network in the principle that no manual changes are allowed. Um, so all changes go through an IT system and uh, everything has to be tested, developed and proven to work in the lab before it goes to produ production. Uh, we try to minimize human errors by running automated continuous tests at all time so that no untested change ever goes into the network. Now let's go a little deeper. This network as a service framework that I've just uh, highlighted is built on operational domain managers, ODMs, as defined by the Telemanagement Forum. You may have seen this before. Now let's go down a little deeper yet more. We are um, using NSO for resource management as you can see here, and we have a standard software development lifecycle chain, a CICD uh, chain with standard tools, Git, Robot, uh, Jenkins. Now it's actually we're developing software and uh, we needed to change the way our people work. So we uh, are a telco, not, a, not an IT company, and we had uh, very different ways of working in the past. So in a kind of a waterfall way, we had the profile of the, the network engineer who develops a piece of router configuration, uh, tests uh, the resulting um, network, of course, in his lab. And once he's happy with that, he writes an engineering man manual in maybe in a Word format and delivers this Word document to some software engineer. That software engineer reads this manual, interprets it in his, in his own way, writes a, a configuration template, an IT specification, and passes it on to 
some maybe external software developer who will write a fulfillment tool that gets delivered to the software and the network engineer. They take the code into the lab, test it manually, um, most likely not happy at the first try with what was delivered. Um, so they start all over again. And at the end, the software engineer deploys the code and the network engineer will trigger the network update. This is a lengthy process. Now, as we see network more as a piece of software that we have to develop against, we have now a completely new different job profile. The net DevOps engineer is a person who does three things. He develops router configuration as the network engineer did, but he's also able to uh, write NSO services, adapting templates, running uh, uh, glue code in Python, and at the end, he has to be able to write tests to make sure that whatever he develops um, is tested, not only by himself, but in a continuous automated way. So he pushes code to say two repositories, one for testing and one for the actual service. By pushing code, um, automated tests are run. Um, and if this test fails, he has to. Again, fix the code until the test is happy, or if he did, if he um, developed something new, he has to um, update the test cases. Once everything is okay, the DevOps engineer will deploy the code to production and use it to update the live network. So the right tooling is very important. Um, our Network engineers have not become software developers overnight, and it's key that we give them the right tools so that it is easy for them to do all these steps. So how does our environment look like? We have a, a CICD pipeline that governs the whole lifecycle process. We have IT systems, most, mo mostly NSO, but also surrounding IT systems. Then we have a network that is configured by NSO, and we have traffic generators and test infrastructure to run automated tests in the network. So the life cycle of a new feature starts on the laptop of the developer. He has his local install of NSO, he uh, tests against NetSIM devices, um, and when he's happy, he pushes the NSO service to it, but he also pushes um, the robot test cases to Git. Now pushing anything to, to Git will trigger the first step of the CICD pipeline. Jenkins takes that code and runs a set, a series of unit tests um, on another NSO instance somewhere on a, in a data center, um, but that NSO instance configures a lab this lab is based on uh, virtual devices and uh, unit tests are run. Basically just to configure, uh, to verify the configuration that is applied is the one that is expected. Now, if that is okay, we can move and promote the code to the integration stage. Integration stage means that um, uh, we have yet another NSO instance and a few surrounding IT systems, such as a resource inventory, and NSO actually is used to configure a physical network, a copy of production network, slightly smaller, but um, with the exact same hardware as we have in the live network. We also have test equipment, parent traffic generators, fiber cutters, power cutters to be able to run tests automatically. Now, once a feature is OK and we create a new release that is targeted towards production, then we promote the code to the next stage, the end-to-end -end stage. As you can see here, we have yet more IT systems, and uh, the target here is to test the API interactions between those systems and NSO. And again, we have uh, another copy of the live network, another lab instance with hardware, um, with uh, test center ports, with fiber cutters, with power cutters, and so on. So now we have a new release that is going towards production. Um, we have yet another stage, though, called pre-prod. 
Pre-prod is typically has the same software version as production. However, if, if we dis discover a bug in production, we want to have an environment where we can replicate and test that issue and also fix it. So instead of stopping the continuing development of new features in the integration and then to end tests or pipelines, we can target uh, a bug fix to the release and test it before going to production on pre-production. So these are the stages and steps that we do while developing a feature. Now we've been doing this for a year or so, a bit longer actually. What are the key learnings? Well, it is really useful, it is very helpful, and it has saved us on quite some incidents already. But we also went through a learning curve. Um, initially, tests were written manually, and we quickly noticed that it takes a lot longer to write tests than actually writing the features. And uh, maintaining tests was very painful, especially for those manual tests that were written by some other developer with a different uh, philosophy in his mind. So we, are, we realized that we had to, write, to use the right tools. Choosing NSO is, of course, a good choice, but we also have to have the right tools to generate those, those test cases. And that's where NSO ARC comes in, because it allows us to generate and regenerate the test cases in a, a very easy way. But then we also noticed that uh, diversity is not always good. So how can you recreate someone else's tests, for instance? Um, if every uh, developer has his very specific um, development environment, it's very likely that the tests don't start from the same initial scenario. So it is key that we have a common development environment and common development methodology as well. This is something that we're still working on. We're not quite there yet. Um, but just as a reminder, that is this is also a very important step. So now I'd like to hand over to, to Mikael to give you more insight of what NSO Arc can do for you. Thank you, Martin. So taking one step back, I would like to take you to a day in the life of a NSO quality assurance engineer. So Typically, we start with checking the code, the Yang model, the templates. We would create some payloads, uh, checking the outputs of the payloads, and then starting to write the test cases. Uh, to write the test cases, you have to generate the input and output, which NSO needs to actually create the service instances, and also how to delete them. And if they find any defects, you would log those, of course. Uh, and then you would start over uh, with the next. And how do we automate this, this procedure somehow? So NSO has, sorry, uh, typically we see some automation failures in, uh, in, our, uh, in many of our customers. So some of them might use the wrong automation tools to begin with, uh, like Ansible for doing networks, and that can bring give you a lot of headache down the road. You might be automating with the uh, with random values, which of course the network engineer will not accept in the end. Uh, imagine trying to configure VLAN 5002 because it's a random value, right? Um, an open source tooling keeps evolving, so you have to always maintain things and, and change your uh, approach on how to, to actually automate things. And then, of course, when it comes to maintenance of your automation, uh, that is not actually cheap, even though you, your management might think that it is. Uh, and then, of course, for reporting, uh, when it comes to testing, test reports, all of those things might be lacking. Uh, and so you don't have the full view of what's actually wrong with things. Uh, and it's very hard to troubleshoot something if you don't have the correct reporting in your tooling. Bill Gates once said, supposedly said that automation applied to an inefficient operation will magnify its inefficiency. 
Uh, and I think that applies here, that if you try to automate something in a bad way, you will also get a very inefficient, and uh, you will just make things worse, basically. So what can we do? Um, so NSO has a lot of nice things like automatically generated APIs. Uh, APIs which can give you the service instance configuration. It can give you uh, the diff set of your in instances by using the action get modifications. You can of course remove services and then add them back again in a, in a programmatic way. And you can capture the device and, and CDB configuration as you do. And this brings me to introduce ARC. This stands for Automated Robot File Creation. And we do use the NSO and the robot framework or the robot extensions built uh, by CX, uh, which is called CXTA. Uh, and we want to introduce um, a new way of working basically. So you would create your variations of your service instances in your local NSO. You would verify the output of each and every one of those instances to make sure that they actually configure what you want. Then you run the arc action, which is create robot. And then you push uh, both your new code and these uh, robot files generated by NSO arc into Git. And now I will hand over to Martin, which will go through the Swisscom way of working with Jira. Exactly, yeah. All our features, they start their lives in, in Jira with a ticket. And we actually use Jira to create uh, the branches for the NSO service and for the CXO test cases. Uh, as you can see at the bottom right corner, there is a, a link to create the branch directly from here. So that makes sure that uh, the name uh, of the branch is linked to the Jira ticket. Quite a nice feature. Now, creating that new branch will trigger the CICD pipeline. It uh, will build and test that uh, newly created branch. Has not had any modifications yet, so it is most likely going to succeed. Um, everything is uh, triggered by or orchestrated by, by Jenkins, uh, which uh, in turn calls a make file to do a number of things. First of all, the actual code is checked out, so the, the correct branch. Then we download NEDs and any pre-compiled packages. We run Docker instances for NSO and for CXDA. Um, we compile the NSO packages and uh, at the end, NetSIM devices are created and are loaded with standard configurations. So now we have our uh, default uh, environment that is always look that always looks the same way basically. Now comes the stage where the test cases are run. Again, Jenkins calls the make file to prepare a test setup to actually execute all the test cases, and when they are run, the Docker instances are stopped again, and the tests test results are reported. So this is done automatically every time we create a new branch or when we push code to us to some existing branch. Now the developer, um, he needs to have a very similar environment on which he can work on. And he can on his own machine use the same make file to uh, do the same steps. He first checks out the code that is usually done directly using git commands, right? Uh, then the downloading of NEDs is not is not necessary uh, as long as they don't change. But then uh, he uses the make file to create the Docker instances, run NSO and CX the Docker instances, uh, compile the packages, and create NetSIM devices uh, with the same set of standard configurations than on the CI/CD pipeline that we saw before. So now he is ready to start coding. He has an environment that has the same baseline as everyone else. Once that is done, um, he develops a new feature, and now he has to make sure that the new feature does exactly what it is supposed to do. So, 
uh, when you've developed a new feature, you have to run it against your old tests. That'll take a while, so grab a cup of coffee. Then when you come back, you will get something like this. So a diff between what the robot expected and what was actually produced by the new, the new code, the new feature that you've just pushed. And you see on the right hand side, there is a, an extra set of commands uh, of configuration lines that are added. Now you have to make sure that this is exactly what you want. Nothing more, nothing less. Um, if you're happy with it, then you can recreate the test cases. And again, we have a make file target for that. And what it basically does is a script that executes the NSO arc action to recreate the test cases in exactly the same way as they were created initially. Now you have you can run those test cases again. Grab another cup of coffee, and when you come back, they should now there should now be no differences anymore. Um, if that is indeed the case, then you can commit test case and um, uh, merge uh, or create a pull request to merge both uh, tests and the NSO service back into your mainline branch. All right, thank you, Martin. So what we're proposing here is a new way of working with the quality assurance cycle. So you would add NSO arc to your NSO instance, of course. You compile the package and do a package reload. Then you start your usual cycle of modifying your service model with a Yang or code or template. Then you create or modify your existing instances. Then you run your robot tests, which you had regenerated before. Then you check and expect a failure, right? So then you have to check that output to make sure that, that that failure is what you want it to be, right? And nothing else should be there than that exact configuration you've developed in this feature change. Then you run the create robot action again. And these are then added into the Git pipe, Git to be captured in the pipeline testing. And then of course, uh, you might have some quality assurance engineer checking the device config, uh, which is generated in this pipeline. If this all checks out, you can promote this to the next stage. Uh, if not, you can open a new ticket uh, to send to the de developer or DevOps engineer. Uh, this might be the same person, obviously you will stick, skip the opening of a ticket. But now let's look at a, a demo. All right, so services. I have services in my system. I have a nano service. I have a stacked service, which in turn owns two other services, router static and ERF service. What do I do now? I can run the arc action, create robot, all service instances. I will output this to the path uh, folder demo. Test in isolation is a very good keyword, means uh, once this is running, it will actually remove all other service instances and test every single instance uh, in its isolation, meaning there will be no other service configuring the same devices at the same time, um, meaning the diff set will be isolated for each and every service. And this is very useful for pipelines where NetSIM devices are used. Uh, where you would expect no other configuration at the time of the configuration of the service. Uh, uh, so this is a way of basically removing all other service instances before generating output. And now it has finished. And let me run another instance to another uh, folder, demo dry run and add a keyword dry run 
uh, and no date time. No, the date time means that there will be no date time stamped folder required, uh, which means that every time you run this action, it will actually overwrite the same output over and over again instead of creating a new set of folders. So if we look at the output here into the file system, you can see that it's generating files right now. And you can see there's service config XML and all kinds of files being generated automatically. And at the end, you can see there's a robot file generated. In the robot file, there's a docker run command, which we can copy. And then run it. Before I run the docker run command, I will remove all services. So now my NSO instance is empty. I have no services anymore. Now I'm running the Docker command against the normal set, which is not dry run, which will create, uh, verify the line by line configuration of each and every service which is tested in that robot file. Uh, so output is checked with show running config on each and every device which is being configured on all these on these service instances. And in the case of nano services, obviously we wait until uh, any uh, remnants of the service is removed before we can continue. You can see that every single test case here is passing. Now I'm going to run the same command uh, with the dry run set, which gives you a little bit different output and, and less uh, verification. But in most cases, as in netconf devices, uh, like uh, if you use the netconf nets, for Cisco devices or any other devices like Juniper, you will, the dry run uh, verification usually is sufficient uh, and you can see it executing very quickly. Uh, and I would say if you have hundreds and hundreds of test cases, dry run will make it a lot faster. I'm going back to the CLI. And you can see how to actually you can run these dry run test cases directly using the action inside the NSO arc. So I'm just going to time these uh, executions and you can see how quickly it executes the dry runs against what I have generated. You only need to provide the file path and yeah, 0 0.29 seconds later, you have a result. All right, so let's introduce a feature change or template change or whatever you want to modify. I'm changing the spelling of this line of configuration. You see color with a U. And then I need to just redeploy that package. And then I can re-execute the same command again to dry run. And you can see the failure. Comparison failed and you can go into the log. Copy this one. I go out into file system, paste, open it. And you can see in the, the very highlighted area here, the, the spelling change has been captured uh, by the verification. Nothing else has been changed, of course.
if I go and execute the same thing with the Docker against the robot file, we can see a little bit more detail in the in how it's being uh, generated, and this can be run in the pipeline, of course. And soon we should see uh, a couple of failures in the test cases. There we go, two failed. Now we can open the log file here. You can see the same spelling change. Let's go back and run the same Docker run command against the, the full capture uh, of the line by line configuration check. And you can see an even more detailed capture of this error after the execution finishes. Okay, failures. Uh, as expected, so I'm opening the log once more. Now you can see, drill down to the exact line of configuration where the change has happened. All right, that concludes the demo. Okay, and so ARC is a unique tool. It's unique in its capturing ability. It uses the live status execution of show running config or RPC calls in the case of netconf devices. So its line by line configuration validation is unfiltered by the NED. It does only if comparison before and after. Nothing else matters to NSO ARC in this case. So basically, if you have any pre-configuration that can also be captured as part of the capturing of your uh, service instance configurations. So current release is version 1.1.2, and you have new features in every version, more or less. So don't drown in test case creation work. Use our ARC. Thank you for listening to this presentation.